Fantastic. Thanks, Tori. Um, hi, everybody. Lovely to see so many people um, on this afternoon's webinar. Um, as Tori says, if you've got any questions, then do just uh, chat and type them in the chat box, or I think somebody's just typed in the Q&A box, um, and we will hopefully be able to answer those questions at the end if we don't answer them um, right now. So I'm just going to, I'm going to talk through about 20 minutes, half an hour, um, all about Abbey College Manchester, and um, uh, three of my student council uh, will be here, and they will also kind of give you a student's perspective um, of Abbey. They're not here at the moment because they're still in lessons, but they, they'll be here in kind of five minutes. So, for some reason, ah, there we go, there we go. So, so Abbey College Manchester, what are we? We are, so we're city centre college, we're based right in the centre um, of Manchester. We're a very small college. We've got currently 210 students um, studying with us, with us here. We will hopefully have about 215, 220 next year. And the students come from, a, from about 45 different countries, which is really exciting. So, uh, you know, fantastic multicultural environment. 30 to 40% of our students are UK students. Um, and our UK students come from Manchester, North Cheshire, South Lancashire, Yorkshire, Merseyside. So they come from all around Manchester. Um, and with us being in the city centre, it's really easy to, to travel here. Um, so for students and staff to get in in the mornings, uh, there's trams, there's trains, there's buses. Um, and, it's, and it's a perfect location. Um, we have a boarding house. Um, the boarding house is over in the northern quarter, for those of you who know Manchester. And it's about a 10, six to 10 minute walk, depending on how fast you walk and how often you stop before coffee and shopping. Um, no, it's, it's, it's not far away at all. Um, and the beauty of Abbey is we've got some, we've got some really interesting courses. Um, and we're very flexible um, with what we do. And why would you, why would you choose to come to Abbey? Well, we're, we're a little bit different than your kind of traditional school. Some of you will be in much, much larger settings. Some of you will be in places where you got to wear uniforms. So here we've got no uniform. We've got no bells. Everybody's on first name terms. So I'm the principal, but my name's Chris. Everybody calls me Chris. You know, so everybody says so a little bit more adult, a little bit different um, from your traditional setting. But that doesn't mean that our academic expectations are any lower and it doesn't mean that students will perform any worse. On the contrary, because we're removing what I call clutter, you know, and in terms of do you top button up, do you tie up, put your blazer on, make sure your skirt's the right length, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is there an area where only year 12s can go, where year 13s go, where year 11s aren't allowed to go? We don't have any of that. All right, because we're very small, we're a familial college. And um, because we've only got kind of 210, 220 students on roll, everybody knows everybody. All right. Uh, so we're very supportive. And of course, with us being mainly a sixth form college, our teachers are absolute subject experts. OK, so they don't need to worry about year seven, eight, nine. Um, they can they can just focus on on helping you um, reach your goals and helping you get to university if that's if that's what your goal is. Um, so uh, our motto here at Abbey is achieving success together. All right. And, you know, I think the, the key word there is together because it is very much a partnership. It is very much us working with you, you working with us, with your parents, with your agents and guardians, if you have them, um, to make sure that you're as, success, as successful as you as you can be and as successful as successful as you want to be. But it's, as it says there, you know, what is success to you? Because success to one person um, is very different than success to another person. So we're going to explore over the next few slides kind of different areas of success and what success can look like. Um, so, you know, in terms of, obviously, in terms of exam results, um, that last year's exam results are here. Um, I'm not going to talk, uh, talk through them because you can, you can read them. Um, but we were, we were really pleased um, with last year's cohort, and that's A-level, uh, exam results at the top. It's the IFP and CSP, which is the International Foundation Program and Combined Studies Program in the middle, and then GCSEs at the bottom. Um, okay, so students, students who come to us, they do really well um, because we are focused, because we are, you know, we're excellent teachers, because the pastoral support is really good, um, the academic support is really good, the special educational needs support is really good. Um, 
and also as helping you get into university. So Abbey College Manchester was founded 31, 32 years ago. It should have been our, our 30th anniversary a couple of years ago, but unfortunately COVID uh, kind of hit. So we missed all the celebrations, which was a great shame. But Abbey was, was founded as a reset college and it was founded as a reset college for students who hadn't got into university to get uh, to do mainly medical um, courses and that still remains kind of one of our specialities. Um, we have students every year, as it says here, going to medicine, engineering, law, economics, a whole range of, of different subjects kind of all over the country. Lots of the students tend to stay in the north. They tend to want to go to northern universities, Manchester, Durham, Newcastle, Leeds, Bradford, Liverpool. Um, and we have, a, we have a very good success rate at, at helping our students get into those universities. Um, as it says here, you know, so the, the IFP results are, are, are on the top and the, the A-level results are underneath. And again, this year is looking just as good. We've got one student who's sitting on, a, on an Oxford offer. So that's very exciting. He wants to read chemistry at Oxford and we are very hopeful that he will get the grades he needs because he's a, he's a top student. So success for some people is going to be the academic success, absolutely, but also success can can be other things as well. Um, you know, it could be it could be more more the short term um, goals. It could be the learning English to 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 be able to access at university. You know, it could be it could be sporting success. Well, I'll talk more about sport um, in a little while. And it's also you know it's it's learning those skills, and that's one of the that's one of the great things. Um, about doing the A-levels or doing the IFP. It's those skills you learn as well as the knowledge, obviously, um, but um, they are very much skills-based um, kind of assessments nowadays. And alongside our motto of achieving success together, we also have the five R's framework. And this kind of, uh, this runs across everything we do. And it's, it, it's about routine, rigor, responsibility, resilience, and reflection. And those are five things that we encourage all of our students to kind of demonstrate. And, you know, routine is really important because if you've got that routine, it's getting up at the same time every day. It's making sure, you know, you leave on time and then the rigor of doing your homework, making sure it's always their responsibility, handing your homework in, asking those questions, making sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Resilience, you know, the resilience is really important. Things won't always go perfectly. You, you, you're going to find some things hard. You're going to get some things wrong. How do you then pick yourself up afterwards um, and carry on when things aren't going well and then reflection you know I think it's really important to at times just take a step back and say yeah that was a really good day or or, or conversely yeah I really struggled today what what do I need to do to improve um, you know and again your teachers will help you um, kind of develop these these kind of five R's um, through your time with us here at Abbey um okie dokie so we've got various different courses um that we run we we do the traditional gcse courses um and we do them over two years so you can join in year 10 we also do them over 18 months so come in kind of january time or we do them as a one-year course now joining as a one-year course it's it's fast obviously because we we cover the whole of the two-year content in the one year um, and because we do it over over one year, um, the maximum number of subjects you can do is six. OK, because it's you know, obviously it's normally a two year course. And um, so trying to condense um, more than six down into one year would be, uh, would be a little bit, uh, a little bit bonkers. Um, and then um, A levels. So A levels are a two year course. We don't offer anything short than a two year course. Um, and the A levels offer students who are, you know, 16, 17. Students tend to do three subjects occasionally four but if it is four the fourth does very often tend to be kind of further maths alongside maths further maths chemistry and physics um, occasionally you know somebody might want to do a maths and accounting and business and economics two two of my student leaders have just come in to join us they're, they're gonna they're gonna introduce themselves in a little while so if there's a little bit of noise guys are your phones on silent Fantastic. They're going to check their phones, put their phones on silence. Um, and they'll be able to talk more about the courses as well, because um, some of them are doing A-levels, some of them are doing the IFP, and they'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that. We also offer um, the one-year retake course, so quite often students don't necessarily do as well as they had hoped or as well as they wanted um, when they do their A-levels the first time round. 
and they come and they they reset which as i said before that's kind of how the college was founded um all those years ago and then alongside the traditional gcses and a levels we also have the international foundation program for international students and it's called the combined studies program for domestic students um and it offers it's a one-year course and it offers it can be done over two years it can also be done over 18 months um, and it offers direct entry to most British universities um, and there's lots of different pathways um, you can choose doing the IFP. There's about 10, 12 subjects. It's rather like the A-levels. Um, and the, the beauty of the International Foundation Programme is it's a modular course. So you do, you do your term one, you do unit one in term one, at the end of term one, you have the unit one exams. It's finished, it's gone, it's out of the way, it's done. In term two, you then do unit two. Again, the same story at the end of unit two, uh, at the end of term two. And you gradually build up your percentage um, over the course of the year. Um, and the universities will then give you an offer based on percentage rather than the grade. Um, and we, we, we've got lots of partner universities who we work with um, for the IFP. And lots of the universities understand the IFP like the IFP um, because it's, it's a modular system, which is very much how universities work. And so our students tend to get really good offers. A pass at, a pass at IFP is 40%, um, but an average offer would be somewhere around the 60, 65% mark, depending, depending on the course, depending on the university. We also offer some sports courses. So we also offer academic studies with football or with basketball. And that's for, they're both for boys and girls um, who are age 14 or over, who really enjoy playing football, um, or basketball. So the, the football and basketball are possible with GCSE, with A-level, um, with the IFP. And the way it works is the students have lessons here in, in the main building in the mornings, and then they go to uh, go to International House or the Manchester Giants um, for the football or basketball in the afternoon. Um, lots of the students who come to us, they, you know, they, they say they want to be professionals and we, we support them everywhere we possibly can. The, uh, the coaches at International House are all kind of ex-professional footballers, so they've spent their whole careers playing and working in the professional game. So they're, they're, they're in a really good position to be able to guide the students um, as to how, to how to progress into professional football if they are, if they're good enough. Uh, professional coaches come in and talk and professional scouts also come in and do and watch some matches. And then my third, my third student council member is here as well. Hello, is your phone on silent? Yes. Excellent. Um, and then down at the Manchester Giants with the basketball, um, the owner is, uh, is an ex-professional GB basketball player and the some of the Manchester Giants players also help out with training. OK, so the, the students get to get to be trained by professionals. And then what we found is the students who do the, the basketball and the football courses, it really helps them with their rigor. It really helps them with their routines. And for those who don't have English as a first language, those who are working in language two or language three, their English improves really quickly because they're having to communicate with with their coaches and with their teammates who obviously don't speak their language um so academic support at abbey college manchester um there's lots and lots so all three are sitting staring at me this is this is rather disconcerting um all of our all of our um God, I completely lost what i was saying then uh, we guide the, the the students education throughout their time with us so um all of the students will go into a tutor group so what i didn't what i didn't mention before was that the maximum class size in any class is 12. OK, the average class size is probably somewhere around eight or nine, depending on the on the year, depending on the subject. But the maximum um, is 12. Occasionally this year we've had 13 or 14 because it's been a funny year post COVID. Um, but ordinarily the maximum size is 12. And that's you know, that's fantastic from a support point of view. Um, some of you will be currently at schools where you're in classes of 30. Um, and that's really difficult. It's really difficult to ask questions. It's really difficult to answer questions. And it's also really difficult for the teacher to get round um, to see you all. Whereas when there's only, you know, seven or eight others in the room, it's really easy for the teachers to spot if you've understood something, if you've not understood something. And again, it's much easier to ask a question where there's only five or six others um, rather than when there's kind of 25 others. 
Um, so we report home to parents kind of on, a, on at least a half termly basis. Sometimes it's every kind of three or four weeks um, because we think it's really important for parents to know kind of what the progress is and, and, and where the students are up to in their, in their learning. And then in terms of UCAS, which is the, the way that one applies to universities here in the UK, um, when they go into year 13, all students are put in bespoke UCAS classes. OK, I've got two, two experts on the staff um, in helping the students with their UCAS. That's, their, their names are Nigel and Mark. Um, and they will be able to guide the students through the whole process because it is a strange process. It is a funny process. If you, well, obviously, students will have never done it before, but they may not have had siblings who've done it before. So we go right from the beginning, um, right to, right to right going through absolutely everything with them. Um, and then for the year 12s, for the year 11 and year 12 students, we have end of year reviews. So you guys have got your end of year reviews coming up over the next few weeks. Um, and that's just to see to see how things are going. Um, you know, sometimes students join us on a two year A level course, but realise that the International Foundation programme is, is the better way for them to go. So it's a chance for us to kind of sit down um, and talk through any difficulties they may be having, any extra support they may be needing. And obviously, international students who don't have English as a first language, we fully support them uh, with IELTS and or academic English. We also have a, we also have a very good learning support department. Um, our Senko is called Jen, and she's always on hand to, to listen to students. And it could be, you know, it can be mental health issues. It can be learning difficulties. Jen, Jen's the one to go and talk to. And lots of our students do go and talk to her, even if, you know, they don't have any 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 kind of problems so she's just a great person she's a great listening ear um so the college day um so the early bird study session and the twilight study session there at the top and the bottom they're for boarders okay so i mean day students are more than welcome um to come into the building at those times if they wish but boarders have to do two sessions a week three sessions a week initially and once we're once we're confident in their their kind of routines then we we take that down to two sessions um, and that's with our new study manager in the study centre. Um, and then lessons start at 9.30. Okay, so we don't start teaching until 9.30. It was a little bit later than some places, but I think the students like it, a little bit of a light in. And it also means those who are travelling quite a distance, it gives them longer. And we, we started doing this kind of post-COVID um, just, to, just so that people weren't on the really busy buses and trains and trams, and we've kept it for the moment. Um, so lessons are 40 minutes. Most lessons are taught in doubles. As you can see, there's a double, then a little break, then a double, then a teeny weeny little break, then a single. Very short lunchtime or 50 minute lunch, 45 minute lunchtime, or it's 35 minute lunchtime with a 10 minute registration period. Um, and then afternoon lessons, and we don't finish teaching, as you've just seen, until 4.40 when these guys kind of came to join me. Um, so there's a little look at some of the some of the college rooms there. I know some of the people who are on this webinar have actually been into the college. Uh, and I know some of you are not in the UK, so you can't come to visit. But if you do want to come and visit, then this is what you can expect to see. Um, and then boarding. So boarding is in Clydesdale House. As I say, it's about it's about a six to ten minute walk, depending on how fast you walk in a part of Manchester, which is called the Northern Quarter. And it's only for students who are age 16 or over. So you have to be 16 um, by the beginning of September. If you're under 16, then you can live with a homestay host. I'll talk about those in a little while. But uh, Clyde's House is fantastic. All right. So it's only been open, I think, for two years. And obviously in its first year, it was almost empty because of COVID. So most of the most of the rooms are absolutely brand new. And that photo there is one of the common rooms. OK, so there's a, there's a dining room, there's a table, nice big corner sofa, 50 inch TV. Um, on the wall, I think we 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 pay for Netflix um, for all the different all the different flats. Um, so the the way it's designed is the the students they're in they're in clusters. Okay, so they're they're in there's there's kind of ten or twelve rooms for each cluster. Boys on boys have had their, have their own clusters. Girls have their own clusters, and then each cluster has uh, has a common room and also has a kitchen. Okay, it's a big fully equipped kitchen we do also do all of the cooking so if you don't want to cook that's cool because we've got a fantastic chef who's called Esther and she provides all of the meals however if you do want to cook you do have the facilities to cook for yourself high speed internet connection obviously wi-fi 24 hour security at the weekends um, secure door entry system you need two separate fobs to get in 
um, and there's also a cycle storage downstairs and free laundry, which is amazing. So there's, there's washing machines and drying machines downstairs and they are free to use for our students. We have live-in house parents, okay, and the house, and the house parents are very much part of the pastoral team and they are there 24 hours a day and there'll always be two on shift overnight and at weekends and stuff um, and they look after the students and every evening there's a range of activities going on and also kind of trips and, and activities at the weekends. Some more pictures there of Clydesdale House. Um, looks really nice. It is really nice. There we go. Typical host family. I guess the host families are for students who are under 16. Now, sometimes students who join us when they're under 16 choose to stay with the host families when they when they could move to Clydesdale House because they really do become part of the family. This is Andrew, who's been with us for, I think, two years, and he's on the football course and he's doing IFP and he lives there with Lisa. Um, and he's lived there the whole time he's been with us. He could move to Clydesdale House, but he, he loves it. As you can see, he looks really happy. And again, he is part of the family, you know, and it's, we've worked, we've got lots of home, of host families all across Manchester, most of whom have been with us for many years. Um, and they really do include the students in their families. Um, and again, they provide, you know, they provide three meals a day. They take, they take the students out on weekends um, and they look after them really well. Um, enrichment and clubs. So on a Wednesday afternoon, students do enrichment um, and there's a whole range of activities that goes on. And it's something that uh, it does what it says on the tin. It enriches the students' time with us and they can choose, they can, they can choose the sports, they can choose yoga. Um, and there's also, as it says here, art, photography, film, audio books, well-being, science, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of range, a huge range and an ever-increasing range of uh, activities and clubs on offer and um, we also we also offer music um, and there's a chance to perform at various different events we have a festive evening um, back in December various assemblies and we've got graduation coming up and I've been told there's quite a few people singing graduation which is quite exciting so I'm looking forward to that um, so welcome to Abbey. So we are we're in the centre of Manchester, which is, is a fantastic city. Manchester is a cool city. It's it's small, it's safe, it's friendly, it's very diverse. It's got three huge universities, so it's a very young city. There's a really good music scene, there's a really good sports scene, there's a really good art scene, and it's just it's just a cool place to be. Um, so here in college, as I say, maximum class size is 12 and you're going to be taught by absolute subject specialists, most of whom have been here for, for a long time. So I, I've been here at Abbey for three years, which is exactly what Sue Ed will tell you in a moment. She's always been here three years. Um, but And I'm one of the newer members of staff. Lots of teachers have been here for a long time because it's a great place to be. You know, the, the programmes are very flexible. Um, and lots of individualised support is available to the students. And then they're, they're sitting nodding. And then there we go, Manchester, um, ranked as the third best city in the world in Time Out Index September 2021. I don't know what number one and two were. Um, probably New York and Dubai or something. I don't know. Oh, no, not Dubai. Right. No, not Dubai. Right. Um, or Amsterdam. And uh, there we go. So as it says there, you know, Northern Powerhouse in England, youthful, diverse, energetic city. Bursting with character, one of the most exciting places to be in the UK. Around there's so much building work going on. It's a, it's a hugely expanding city. It's a really exciting place to be. Um, so we're looking forward to you coming to join us. That's it from me. So I am going to stop sharing my screen, I think, and I'm then and I'm there we go. That's better. And I'm now going to ask the students to initially just kind of say hello, introduce yourselves, say where you're from, and then say what you're studying. And then I've got some questions if you kind of try up. So Suad, should we start with you? I will turn this around. There we go. Hi guys, I'm uh, Suad, I'm from Libya. And uh, this is my third year at Abbey. And um, yeah, I'm studying, currently studying my A-levels, AS, um, chemistry, biology and maths. And in terms of teaching, um, it's really, really good. I really like all of my teachers and the class size are really small, especially for AS in my year right now. In chemistry, I only have maybe five other students. 
Um, and same with biology and maths is a bit bigger, but still under like 10 or something. Um, so yeah. Fantastic, thanks to Ard. <laughs> I'll come back with some questions in a little while. Danesh. Uh, hi, my name is Danish Balizade. I'm from Iran. I'm 19 years old, and this is my first year in Abbey College, Manchester. It's been roughly amount, about seven months here in Abbey. Uh, I've quite enjoyed the whole IFP course from studying photography and business. It really helped me to open up my knowledge and uh, my experience here in Manchester. And uh, the amount of support and care for English and IELTS was really boosted my uh, confidence and my learning skills throughout this past year. I do recommend coming, uh, studying any artistic or English courses. And science courses, but you, you're only saying that because there's <laughs> a certain <laughs> you do, <laughs> I'm sure the girls will say it's different. There's only two sides to the story. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, Magashree. Hi guys, uh, I'm Bhagashree. I'm from India. This is my second year at Abbey. I'm in year 12 and I'm doing chemistry, biology and psychology. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, Swad and Danish have said most of it, but yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, the teachers are actually, uh, they're really easy to talk to. You could like approach anyone, even if you, if even if they're not your subject teachers, you can ask them anything and they will help you. So yeah. Cool. Okay. So tell me guys, what, what is Abbey like compared to the schools you were at before? How different is it and why is it different? I think do you want to do you want to sit closer to each other so we can see you all? If you want to, girls, you want to squeeze in. Thorn between two roses, and you're a rose between two thorns that day. Can you can you see? You have to yeah, lean yeah. in a little bit, but yeah. So what's what's it like compared to compared to where you've been before? Uh, well, obviously, first the class sizes, mm. I would say, because um, in my last school, we did have about 30 students in one class. Mm -hmm. And it, so why 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 does having so few students make such a difference to you personally? Well, it's I think it's better in a lot of ways because um, what ways? As, Tell me what ways. <laughs> as Chris pointed out, um, it is easier for the teachers to tell if you don't mm. understand something, or for them to help you. But at the same time, it is um, in like a few months in, you do know every one in the group and you are talking to everyone and it's it's just easier to ask for help mm. for to the teacher and the other students cool so i think that's really useful brilliant thank you anything to add i think the the school that i went to in italy in uh, padova mm -hmm. um really opened the course more because in part of it was very very academic mm -hmm. a lot of more business scientific courses mm -hmm. instead of like more of like photography art mm -hmm. there was art but it wasn't really open so it kind of opened my opportunities to come here cool and also sports programs yep and english was helping for gccs but obviously from covid it was difficulties so i came here for another chance to Brilliant. improve cool yeah. so, I bought, so where were you before so i was in um Qatar. Um, but I think I was just adding to Danish's point um, about like it be, uh, like my last school being very academic. Mm. I feel like in my last school, if you weren't those top achievers, then they wouldn't really focus on you, especially if you wanted to do like a competitive course, unless you were getting those really, really high scores, they weren't going to like help you. And obviously to get into competitive like courses you do need to get high scores but I feel like at Abbey they will support you even if you are struggling academically and they'll they'll help you and listen to you rather than just being like no obviously they are realistic but you know. <laughs> so what tell me what course what tell me about university um kind of aspirations so what is medicine yeah maybe medicine, maybe medicine. hopefully uh, what are you I'm thinking of? kind of struggling because it's between photography, film, acting, and then cool. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. So you, you give me everything. You, you give me a, my mind's kind of gone everywhere. No, that's, but, that's uh, good, but then, you you've got choices. Yeah. You've got choice, and you're going to get help. Yeah. Kind of next year, and then around, those choices. Finance now. and real estate because of my dad. <laughs> Excellent. I'm thinking medicine. Okay, yeah, medicine like as well. A pretty definitive 
Brilliant. Okay, cool. So, and you've had success in the six one classes this year. How you haven't done it, but girls, you've had you've been in success in six one with Mike. What have you learned in those classes? How has that helped kind of transition from GCSE to A level? Um, I think uh, the best thing about Mike's success lessons is like the study techniques that he gives. So flashcards and Cornell notes. Um, I think last year and even in like GCSE and stuff, you don't really learn how to study properly. Like you just kind of learn your notes and then that's it. But I have actually converted to like flashcards and Good girl. <laughs> converted they work. To, yeah, yeah. I've converted to flashcards and Cornell notes because it's just active learning rather than just reading your notes and highlighting stuff. I think it's also about like um, developing a routine. So we do um, weekly health checks, which are like you come up with a plan of what you're going to do um, this week. And that's really useful because it's it's not like it's not unrealistic. Mm. Um, it's also that time to reflect, isn't it, on what you've learned during the week, what you're happy with, and what you still need to kind of look at over the over the next few days. Mm. What's the what's the jump been like from GCSE to A level? Very big. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a big jump? Very big jump. Yeah, Very big jump. And definitely a lot. You definitely feel it. The, yeah. Everything you do, it's just in a lot more depth and yeah. detail. So it, it does take a while to cope with it. And you're coping. I think so. I hope so. Just about. <laughs> and does the success class help with that? Success and success class help you kind of get your head around that and help you learn? Yeah, good. Okay. Um, what about the house system? Tell me a little bit about the house oh, system. In terms of like my head of house, Mark, I really, really um, like Mark. He supports me a lot with... Um, getting into the course that I want to do, um, giving me ideas for UCAT preparation, um, helping me, like just really just supporting me um, a lot. Um, I don't know about the other house that, that Rachel is realizing, it's so sticky. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in terms of me, I'm very happy with you. I think Rachel is very opening and very yeah. uh, energetic. Yeah, really yeah. That energy yeah. also brings up everybody to like, explore ideas which kind of gives everybody to say what they want to think which yeah. is really good to get out there and even if it's like a not so okay idea it's, it's okay yeah, it doesn't matter yeah, yeah, yeah. just give it out there at least you can try and see what you can get which That's is awesome. really good everybody's cooperating well so yeah. yeah nikki is she's very easy to talk to um she's very easy to just like go up to her and ask for help especially when it comes to ucas and if not like the head of house you do have your own tutors as well and you have your own tutor group again just like a small community of students in your group the people you can talk to your tutor you can talk to and you have uh, like weekly sessions uh 40 minute sessions with the tutor group which it's it's like you do learn something sometimes you're just relaxing <laughs> and it's 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 good so what's it like what's it like being in such a multi cultural environments with students from 45 nationalities obviously here three nationalities represented in front of me what's it like what's it like being being with so many different nationalities i think for me because in italy it was not really multi international yeah yeah it was mostly italian students yeah three african students two iranian students one arab student it's quite it's quite yeah. different yeah yeah but whereas here the, yeah very in Italy, it's, it is called multicultural, but not very big here in the UK. It's very multicultural, very welcoming people, yeah. friendly. Yeah. yeah, that's good. What about in classes? You, you enjoy working with students from lots of different nationalities? Yeah, yeah stuff. it's nice learning about different like cultures. Like I've never met so, uh, so many Iranians in my life. <laughs> I never <laughs> met so many Libyans. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot. There. This year, this year, this year, yeah, there's a lot. This year. Yeah. Cool. But it's definitely it's definitely a plus point. And obviously, you know, your English has improved Somehow, enormously, very, enormously, somehow, hasn't somehow, it? So yeah. obviously, girls, you already spoke. <laughs> you speak English perfectly. <laughs> but you know, Dana, yeah. your your English has uh, has improved enormously. Um, all right, tell us tell us a little bit about Manchester. 
Ooh. Do you live here? You live on Keys? You live in South of Keys? I live in South of Keys, yeah. I think when I first came to Manchester, I did like it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't <laughs> like it because I I was like born in Leicester and then I moved to Qatar and they're both like nice. Well, as in Manchester is not nice, but I was very comfortable in both of them. And then here, I don't know, it was just very different. But I think as the years have gone on, I'm I really love Manchester now. I think it's I think it's like my home now. Like um, I don't think I would move to any other city in the UK. It's it's not too big. It's not like London big, but then it's kind of like you're still busy. Um, like if you compare Manchester Leicester, like this does not this is not even well it's still it's still nice but like it's not busy or anything Manchester's nice and busy that's what I would say <laughs> so, where do you live Vanessa Manchester uh metropolitan okay yeah uh, near there it's yep. a very welcoming area yep. a lot of English local people from Manchester London uh one from actually Liverpool okay it's my neighbor it's very welcoming people uh, it's very interesting because in Padua it's, it's quite small. Yeah. It's next to Venice, it's a very yeah. small yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. And coming from Dubai before, it was uh, a lot different because yeah. in Dubai it's very international. Then you go to an area that doesn't speak that much English, just only Italian. And then here, everybody speaks millions of languages. Yeah, yeah. You don't have any idea? It's really nice here. I, I, I like it here personally, but cool. I, I personally prefer uh, London. Okay, wait for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We actually, where, where do you live? I actually live right here in the city centre. It's like a 10 minute walk oh, yeah, from so Abbey College. Cool. Yeah. What's, what's, what's living in the city centre like? It's it's very fun. It's actually, it's very busy. Yeah. Um, but there's everything like on hand. You, like there are, um, there's uh, an Arndale shopping centre, the bookstores, uh, grocery stores, anything you can think of. Them so many restaurants, walking distance, so, so many, many restaurants, restaurants and bars. And... I can't vouch for other places because I haven't really been <laughs> anywhere else. But... Fair enough. And then next week we are we're doing a little mini kind of end of Eid or end of Ramadan Eid celebration, aren't we? That you guys are kind of helping to organise. So you mm. you you're you're going shopping. Tell I'm us, tell shopping. you're going shopping. Yeah, go and tell shopping. us, tell us what you what you're planning on buying um... for everybody. I'm not sure. I'm just gonna go to Costco and find. <laughs> I, thought going, I thought you were going to have to kind of rush home where there's lots of. No. 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 Just I was thinking of making these little bags. Cool. And you can't really put sticky stuff in bags. Very true. Yeah. So Very I'd rather just stuff. get chocolates and things that everybody will like. A clava. Mm. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> so it's just things you like in fact. <laughs> I like my clothes. So we're doing. So we're going to do a little mini Eid celebration next week. So we've got a lot of, a lot of Muslim students. And it is. It is. Uh, it is Eid this weekend. Um, none of your borders. Um, have you got anything else? Anything else you want? Any other burning things you want to get across to, to kind of all these prospective students and students who are going to come and join us in September? That's not. A, that's not a leading question. The, the, um, the answer can be no. I'd like to say something yeah. about. Um... The experiments that you do, like because hmm. I do um, biology and chemistry, so if you do those, there are several experiments that you do, and they're really fun. They're interactive, and for me, I've always learned better when I'm actually doing something rather than just reading something and trying to learn that. So, and that the, that was a change from my, my old school because we didn't do that a lot. So that that's definitely a brilliant. Plus point. Brilliant. Brilliant, thank you. Okie dokie. Well, listen, thank you very much for staying after college to come and talk. Tori, do you want to, shall I keep the students here if there's any questions for them? Um, oh, I'm just looking at the moment. I've got a couple of questions, but there's not too many coming in. So if they desperately need to go, then that will be fine. But if, obviously they're very welcome to stay if they would like to. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was really... um really helpful to, to kind of like hear about the college from, from, from your point of view and from your side. So um, thank you very much indeed for, for staying after lessons and, um, and, and being here to help us with the event this, this afternoon. So thank you. Thanks guys. Cool. Right, and they're, they're gonna, I think they're gonna, yeah. they're gonna go. Well, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, I think there aren't any questions, are there? Uh, no, I was just the question that I've had a question came beforehand. I was going to ask about um, 
and the, the girls they were talking about it, that they're interested in medicine as well is it but it seems like more about the specialist university courses sort of how these can you do what support is offered for students that want that have one of those specialist really competitive sort of university courses in their aspirations okay well i mean in terms of medicine um, when they're in year 13, we do the medical preparation course. So that kind of takes, that's the Wednesday afternoon, that's, that's when enrichment takes place. Um, and during that, the students learn about, about the NHS, about the different pillars in, in medicine, about morals. Um, go on, Sue, you're, you're nodding, go on, what else? Um, do in um, university interviews, um, a little bit about like what to write in your UCAS, a little bit if you're still writing your personal statement by then, but it's mainly about um, just knowing the NHS values and putting them in your head so that whenever you go to an interview, you know exactly what you're saying. And you're also saying the points that the interviewers want to hear. You're just not, you're not just answering the question from your head, you're answering, backing it up with, you know, important information that you need to know. Also, you, we get given like lots of links, lots of reading, um, more experiences that we can do. So yeah, I think it's run by Jonathan. That's right. He's really, That's right. He's really good at it. And then we also, towards the end of term one, when the, uh, at the time of the interviews, we then do the MMIs here in college, um, where the students, they tend to go around in groups of two, and they've got about 10 different stations and that stands for the multi well, mini medical interviews and there's different stations where they've got to talk about or they've got to they've got a communication stage they've got one where they need to talk about the pillars there's a, there's a, there's a role play there's, there's there's various different um interviews and, and this is what the students will have when they get interviews um for medicine at university so yeah we we help them prepare for that i think this year you're also doing another course aren't you we've got a, we've got a course kind of in conjunction with buckingham university and it's the MDS unit, which stands for medicine. Then um, no, oh, sorry, no, it's um, not. It's called Medical Disease Society. Yeah, there we go. Medical <laughs> Disease Society, and that's in conjunction with Buckingham University. It's a bit of research, a research type project type course. Okay, that sounds very comprehensive. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, thank you, Swad, for for hanging on there to to help answer the question as well. Um, and then the, really in terms of sort of applications, can students still apply for September? Yep, 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 not too late. Um, we've, got, we've got places on all of the courses still, year 10, 11, 12, um, 13, IFP, A-level, yeah, it's not too late. Um, you, if you, when you do apply, you'll have an interview either with me or with Ian, who's one of my assistant principals, or if it's for a sports course, maybe with Mark. Um, so we'd love to see we'd love to see those applications if you are thinking of, of coming to join us or if you're here in the UK, give us a ring, come and visit. We'd love to see you here. We'll show you around, get to meet these guys again um, and, and just, you know, just see see what the classes look like, because, again, you know, it's really it's really easy to sit there and listen to me say small classes and, and you know, and these guys to say small classes but until you actually see what a class of five or six looks like. It's kind of hard to understand why we make such a big thing of that and why we think that is so important. So if you are here, then, you know, give us a ring and come and visit and we'd, we'd love to, to kind of welcome you and, and show you around. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Right, so before we end the session, if anyone does have any other questions they'd just like to put in the chat function at all? No? I think we're all fine. Um, as I say, this um, session has been recorded, so we will make sure everyone does also have a copy of the recording afterwards. And if anybody um, does have um, any questions following them, please do get in touch with us. As we said, we're very happy to welcome you to visit. We can always organise a, a more bespoke, personalised call if you've got some very specific questions. Um, and yeah, we hopefully will look forward to welcoming you to Manchester at some point in the future. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, Tori. Thanks, everybody, for listening. See you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye.